good morning, Rosalie Craig, award-winning actress whose CV spans from everything such as The Light Princess, London Road and As You Like It on the National to playing the first ever female Bobby in Stephen Sondheim's company on the West End. A very, very enviable career. So, how did you find life after graduating from Rose Bruford? Um, how did I find it? Gosh, I'm trying to cast my mind back because it was like 2000 years ago. I think I found it, um, yeah, I think the industry was a very different place then. Yeah. But it definitely was a different place. I think I left and I went into, luckily enough, got a, I had a job probably a few months after graduating, um, which was helpful. But I, the thing that wasn't helpful about that was that I got a real cushion when I first left drama school for about six months of of work um, at the RIC and then I just was thrown out into the world after that so I think I thought the, that the industry was always going to be like that like, like you go to audition and then you get it and that was that and it was like what's up this is what's this great and then realized that's 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 not what happened at all so I think my learning curve and my period of growth and change came after that when I just couldn't get any work ever, ever. And then I was like, okay, um, what do I do in between? And then it was, as we all know, and, and what we do f for our whole lives as actors is find other work. Um, and uh, that doesn't mean that we're not actors anymore. It just means that we just have to make money in lots of different ways. So I did, I've done every job you can imagine. Um, call centre work, waiting tables, um, face painting at London Zoo, um, uh, to little, um, you know, weekend groups for children, for ent teaching them entertainment. Uh, I stuffed envelopes in basements, you know, eh, you know, all of it, painted people's rooms, just anything and anything to find a way to make money. And then, and then it just, it carried on like that for, 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 you know, a good, gosh, 10, 10 or so years. Do you have a favourite role to date? I personally remember coming to see you before, just before my first audition for RADA, and I saw you as the light princess, and it totally blew my mind. Did it? Yeah, absolutely. And I was in a real toss up whether or not to do musical theatre or, or straight acting. Yeah. And I... I did straight acting because I saw that and went, I want to learn to tell a story like that more wow. than anything. Yeah. I think that's really, I think that's the thing, isn't it? That's a really um, brilliant way of sort of looking at it. Yeah, it is about telling stories and it's about, and that's what I find, that's one of the most frustrating things about the industry when they sort of try and say, it's this, you know, you're either this or that. And I think you're not though, are you? You just, you just, we all try and tell stories really well. And, um, and sometimes we succeed and sometimes we don't. I think it, it, in keeping with that, probably my favourite job was doing London Road, actually, mm -hmm. because you got to play 13 people in the space of a few hours. And it was the, the fact, I think it was the fact that we had, it wasn't a story to tell, it was like a, a really important piece of history. And we had to tell this really important story about what had happened to this community and these and these girls that were that were murdered and it felt like a really um important I keep saying important it, it just the fact that we had that um job to do it, it it made it made our job feel much less about what we were doing which i'm always really grateful for that we the and much more about what we we're trying to say about what happened to this community and what happened to the people in it and i think Probably it being my, the, the reason why it was my favourite job is because it just, it wasn't actor focused at all. And I really, really like that. I think the more we can get away with, get away from people going, it's all about us, it's all about us, or it's all about what, what we're doing. And because it was a piece of verbatim, and so I was just listening to people and trying to repeat them. And it wasn't about how clever you were as an actor or how skilled you were or how amazing you were in this role. It was about how well you told that story. And it was just completely liberating in that, from that sense of things, that side of things. Did you always know you wanted to have a family? Did you, and did being an actor ever give you reservations? Yes, it still does. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one. Um, I suppose, 
I never didn't think about not having a family, but I didn't think, yes, I definitely want to have one. I think it's actually when I met Hadley, I thought it was about him. It was like, I want to make a family with him. So it wasn't necessarily like, I, I never harbored desires to have a baby, have a baby, you know. It just, some women are, and some men have that. And I just, I just didn't. So yeah, I wanted to have his baby. And I'm still figuring out the, um, yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm still trying to figure out the whole family thing, even five years in. Did you work whilst you were pregnant? Did you? Yes, I did. What I worked, was I was actually at the National until I was three days before I gave birth. Yeah. Whoa was a bit crazy in hindsight um yes and I remember because I went over my due date obviously loads of people do and I kept saying uh, the, the, like a few people were saying can you come and do a workshop of this you can come and do a reading of this and I was going I can but I could go into labor at any point so as long as you know that and they were like yeah that's fine <laughs> you know and it and it sort of got to the point where I think I was offered like a two-week workshop and I went I, I really you know I really am like 10 days I really don't think I should because I think I probably will have a baby within that time but um do you know I loved working whilst I was pregnant I think it was really really important and I remember at one point the national was saying because I was doing a production of Threatening Opera and I was playing Holly Peachum who's supposed to be a virgin so that wicked, wicked um, literally out here <laughs> um, um, I was saying you can't just replace me when I get too big and there was and luckily because it's Brett they were like no I don't there were there were discussions about it and then I said well look can't you just extend the costume and extend the costume and because I was just wearing a, like a floaty dress and um I just kept going just literally just kept going but people would be on stage like um, Rory Kinnear um, was playing, um, good, can't remember his name, Mac, um, and he would have to hold me sometimes and he'd literally have his hands on my belly and the LV would kick and so he'd be like, this is so weird. <laughs> oh my God. I used to turn up to work and people used to go, how are you still here? I was like, because we need to work. Yeah. We can't work, so why not? I don't, I'm not, I just didn't. I could not sit on that sofa and just grow. I was like, I need, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be at work, but that's the story of my life. I want to be at work. Oh. Don't we all? How have your, yourself and Hadley, your wonderful husband, um, found juggling parenthood with a career in the arts? Really hard sorry to say, but really, really hard. It, in fact, it just, there's bits when you go, okay, we know what we're doing now. And as soon as you do that, it changes. Um, like case in point, what we were just talking about earlier when um, I was like, okay, we're totally, after a year of being at home in a pandemic, just going, it was just about Elvin and neither of us had any work for that whole year, apart from the other voiceover or something. And we were really worried about that and, really scared about money and Elvie's future and all of our work had been cancelled like pretty much everybody else's and then this opportunity for me to do a series in for Netflix in Berlin came up and I was like this is mental but I've got to do it because we need to do it and then I thought by the time I start filming things will be easier in the world and then of course not you know and when I went out there in April to start filming it was very easy I was coming back I was going for a few days and coming back and then we went out in May and they locked down the whole of Germany to, to the to the UK. So Elvie and I had to stay out in Berlin for we were together on our own there for five weeks. And I was filming and trying to find random childcare, literally from anywhere, any which way I could, or would say, or then I'd be on set and the producer would come on at six o'clock in the evening and say, I'm so sorry, but you you you've got a four AM pick up tomorrow. And I was thinking and the childminders can't start till half past six in the morning. So I was like, okay, that means I have to wake Elvie up at three, put her in the car with me, feed her breakfast whilst my makeup and hair are being done. Um, and my makeup times on the show are insane. They're like three to four hours. So it's been just having to reinvent yourself the whole time. It's like, and reinvent stuff for her. And it's really has just been become 
especially this stretch in Berlin for me and hers, but it was all about her. So I couldn't, there was no time to think about what I was doing in the work. It was just, is she okay? Is she happy? Is she safe? She's in a foreign country, she doesn't know. I'm the only person she knows. Nobody speaks the same language as her. Um, how do we make this okay for her? And obviously Hadley couldn't come back into the country, so we were just literally stuck. Um, so, yeah. I don't, I don't want to repeat it in a hurry, but I don't even know, I, I might have to, you know, because things are like changing like this. They're like, yes, you can, no, you can't, you know. So I'd say you have to become a master of um, change and just going, okay, I don't know what I'm doing now. Let's just do this. I do really, really suffer from, I really have, env I have, I really, really envy people when I'm in that situation who have, lives that are, stay the same i just go i would i would really like that and i can really understand why people would take a, a tv series which stays in the uk for the rest of their lives or like a west end show for like 10 years because you know where you are you just can't plan for it and i'm like oh my god i have to be back in the uk by september she's starting school and they're like we don't know if you will be and you're like no i have to be you know and it's just Stress. It's basically stress. <laughs> Constant. <laughs> and is that why being co works well for you in terms of flexibility and coverage? Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, it's just that that the business model of being co is just it can't be. It just because it's you guys are available and you're so adaptable and you're last minute and also you can come to wherever the you know the the mother or the father is and everyone who works at being co just gets it and it's just so you don't have to um say can you do this or i'm really sorry about this and it's that's half the thing that's exhausting about childcare is that you're going i know it's really weird what i do or um like i'm really sorry that i've walked into the room and i've like half my face is missing due to prosthetics but it's not you know she's fine with it you know it's just like uh, but the adaptability is the reason why being co is incredible i wish there was a being co across the world because then you'd be like ah i just ring being co it's fine yeah hi guys <laughs> yeah save my life yeah i remember the first time i worked for you guys was in hadley's dressing room in the west end i remember for frankenstein right? yeah for frankenstein and then it was even cooler because then the next time i saw him was on the set of all is true and we were like ah, hey and he was Together. We were filming together and he was playing yeah. the doctor in my big death scene. Oh my word. Yeah. <laughs> it was so nice. It's like, we you just did Death on the Nile as well, right? Yeah. Did it go well? It was so cool. It was great. I'd never been on a film set. I've never been on like a, a set with like the cranes and all that stuff. So it was so cool. It's like crazy, isn't it? When you get to do that, you're like, what is this wonderland? And it is a wonderland. It's magical. Do you find it's important to have a creative environment from, from an early stage for LV? We do, yeah. I mean, that's the way we are, you know, I suppose because we are that way, I, that's, that's the only way we know how to do it. I guess and there's, and there's millions of ways to be a parent and this is, just, this is just our way. But I do feel like watching her grow up, her level of confidence and her ability to just adapt to change really quickly or she's very resilient you know it was me half the time saying to her recently are you going to be okay and she's like yes mum of course you know she's like four and she's going don't worry about it like just go and do your thing or she'd be like or I'd be the one that's going I feel so bad and she's going don't I'm fine mummy you know because she's only ha ever had that so and then we try and give her like the most stable loving home life so because the rest of it is so crazy um she, and she kind of you know she she kind of loves it i mean she came on to set recently and the director was getting her to shout action i was like at four i was like brilliant so as long as you've got a really cool working environment as well as well that that because it that's uh, as big as anything isn't it the fact that you can say to people i'm really sorry but my child is going to be with me all day and they're like, yeah, no problem. But it just takes the kid to be adaptable from 
word go, you know, from the word go to be in that environment. Otherwise, you don't want a child unset crying and creaming, it, crying and creaming, screaming and crying. Or like in, in the, you know, she's been in so many theatres backstage with this over the years. I mean, days and days just spent in little mice infested West End <laughs> dressing rooms, like with loads of people coming and going, hi, Albie. You know, you just like, what next, mum and dad? What next? Yeah, and she was always so chill with it. Like, I remember... She was a proper baby at Frankenstein, wasn't she? Yeah, 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 yeah. She, like, total... And it, she was sort of, you know, just sort of toddling. And, um, oh, God, she was so cute. Oh, God, and then I like, remember... Yeah. Yeah. She was so, she was so cool, even as a baby. Like, I remember... She, it wasn't like, she would never like telly, even when she got older, it was never like telly and Peppa Pig. It was constant stimulation. She wanted to sit with you and like play with you. Oh, right. Not yeah, She's still like that. I mean, she, but, but yeah, but also now I'm like, I really need you just to play on your own for five minutes. I can't just sit here all day and play with you. <laughs> like she'll come into, she'll come into the, into the sitting room. She's like, I'm lonely on my own. I'm like, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're literally this far away from me. Go and play with something. Yeah. <laughs> if you could make changes within our industry in terms of being able to support parenthood more, because obviously there's no maternity leave or anything like that, how do you think the industry can adapt better for parenthood? I think it just needs a complete makeover. It really does. It needs to. It needs to recognise that people have families, and it doesn't matter how old the children are. That that's important. That's as just as important as going to work. Um, the amount of times I've watched parents not be able to go to their child's, uh, you know, parents' evening or um, you know, first day at school, or you know, just because they're in a physical warm up at work. It's like they could have just come after that. It just needs to be more humane and understanding. This maternity leave, the financial, the lack of financial support for parents is, is massive. From, from being on, on maternity leave and getting no money whatsoever, um, which was insane, like having to live off government support for like, I don't even know what it was, like 50 pounds, even not even that for a week to feed a child and pay a rent. And how is, I just don't know how anyone's expected to do that. Also, I think we should be, as um, we're just watching Chichester to do now, they're sharing the roles. They're going, it's okay that you're pregnant and then you will leave. It's like, no, you can't have the job. I, I'm so saddened to say, I've had so many women call me over the last few months and I won't say who they are or where these places are because that's their business. But they've called me up and said, I'm pregnant. They've, had, they've been offered a job, they're pregnant, they've told their employers and they've said, no, you can't do the job. Still, still. I'm like, what was their reason? They were just like, because they didn't think it would fit the character. I'm like, we don't live in that world anymore. And these are big, big productions, big theatres, big TV shows. They're doing this. They're just saying, no, you can't. And I just can't believe that people are still having to make those choices between having a family, not having a family. You know, I, I, I'm happy to say out loud, I'm still... I would like to have another child, but I'm very nervous about how to do that now. Because will I lose work? Will I get work? After so long of not earning money, you think, can't afford it. And also, sorry, I could talk about this until I'm blue. No, no, that's, that's great. That's why we're here. No. Um, but <laughs> I also, I'm shocked at, at, um, at this industry not being able to adapt to the fact that it is, we are in a creative industry, so we have to, we have to react creatively to, to families' needs and people's needs. The fact that we are still saying to parents, you have to finish work at six or eight. How on earth can anyone do a school pickup? How can anyone um, afford to do that? If people, there needs to be a package in place for families who can't afford wraparound care you know, in terms of, well, I, I, I can't, you know, I can't stay until nine o'clock on a Wednesday because, or I can't work at the weekends because that is the only time I will see my child um, or my or my children. And um, there's just no, we, we're in a low paid industry and there's no, 
consideration or care or I've been banging on about it since I got pregnant. Where are the crushes? Where are the crushes in these big institutions in these big you've got like places like Netflix or you know the BBC ITV uh, the National the RSC where are the crushes it's not impossible or, or to set something up like this I don't understand or there should be a, um, a role within the management team which are, which is there to support families you know, just one person to go to and say, I literally don't know what I'm going to do about this. So you're not having to go to the director or stage management on a Wednesday evening and go, I just don't know what to do. I have to take her to the doctor's appointment. I've got no one else. It's not legal for anyone else to go with them. It's just all of that kind of stuff. Rather than the industry just going, no, just going, okay, what can we do? What can we do? Even if it was just a, what can we do? How can we help? Absolutely. I I did a self tape with my friend yesterday and she's eight and a half months pregnant and, you know, obviously big, but we had to shoot the tape from about her boobs up. She was like, I don't want them to at all know that there would be, there will be a baby in childcare challenges. But that's so true. Or, or um, it, it, even a lady that I'm filming with now. And I did it as well when Elvie was born. I used to self tape with LVR breastfeeding from here, so she wouldn't make any noise. It's the fact and that every job feels so precious, every actor should feel so thankful and do whatever is in their power to to make it work. And be like, it's okay, I'll just do anything, I'll just turn up, I'll just do anything. Yeah. And why, why do we have to be like that? I still do that. I'm like, it's okay, I'll just manage. And you think, this is so hard, you know. Would you have any advice for young people starting a family and freelancers attempting it? Uh, what is my advice? Just go for it. Uh, to, not to overthink it, because the thing is, you don't, you literally don't know what's going to happen as soon as, as soon as you get a, a child in your in your world, and it's it is more important than any than anything. And um, I know that you know we often talk about how difficult it is or how um, rubbish the industry is. Um, you can do it. It is tough, but you can do it. You, you will build a village around you and, and, a, and a network of people that help you. And um, it just, yeah, just, just, don't over, just don't overthink it. You'll find a way. And there's always, there is always a way. Take it from me, genuinely, genuinely, who's like plate spinning, like going, I don't know how to just even do the next hour. You just find a way. And everyone is so thankful. I'm so thankful we're in a creative industry and have a child because everyone is the, the people that you work with, mainly the actors or. Um, yeah, we're not talking about the corporations, but mainly the actors or the people that you see every day to work with. They're the people who just create the village around you. It's just like they just put Lego and go, right, this will work. This will hold up for the next hour and you just do it. And there's so many people who have been through the same thing when you're going through it and you're like oh my god did you have to go through that as well yes oh finally someone to talk to about it you know so yeah it can it, it it can be done and it is being done across the industry otherwise none of us would have any children and you must if you want to don't be put off by all of the um the can'ts and the and the and the no's because there'll be lots of yeses and you can there's a long way as well Gosh. Uh, just do you. That's it. Uh, whenever I feel like I can't do this or um, about the industry or about being a mum or well, anything in life, you just think and you're going, I can't do it. Those people know how to do it better than me. I don't know what I'm doing. Or you just do you. That's all you can do. You just do you. Just do you on a self tape. Just do you in the playground. Just do you when you um, are on set, on stage. That's all you, you have, isn't it? And um, yeah, that's always been really helpful. <laughs> Not to panic. <laughs> <laughs> Which I do all the time. I haven't mastered that one yet. <laughs>